Welcome, all of you, um, to our webinar. We're going to be talking about um, all about advanced solutions for the CIO and how we're going to apply the BI continuum to better address operational efficiency. We've spent quite a bit of time with CIOs, especially over the last year, um, conducting a wide variety of interviews, surveys, and all other ways of engagement, getting feedback to just try to better understand what are the largest pain points and what are the various components that they consider as important to their BI strategy. So um, what we are going to do, actually, we have a special guest, um, is Christian Ofori Boateng, who is our CEO and co-founder, that's going to give a bit more of a talk about the BI continuum and how it ties in with operational efficiency. So I'm going to be quiet now, and I'm going to hand it straight over to Christian. Well, thank you very much, Jonathan, and welcome, everyone, to our webinar, How the BI Continuum Helps the CIO Address Operational Efficiency. Here are our objectives for today's webinar. Uh, we're going to talk about the goal of business intelligence. I'm going to discuss what keeps a CIO up at night and how this relates to you. We're going to talk about who the audiences for BI are and what they need. I'll introduce the BI continuum and map it to the different audiences. We'll talk about the eight important characteristics of a BI platform and I'll give you some hints about how you can get started or advance on your journey. There are many definitions for business intelligence, and here is one from CIO magazine that I especially like. BI can help you address needs and different audiences, I'm sorry, different needs and different audiences. Um, here's an example. At the tactical level, your sales representative will review a customer's most recent transactions. Here, the focus is on the end user and your customer. At the operational level, your VP of sales can review all sales territories across the United States and decide how to define or redefine each territory based on geography, industry, number of accounts, product line, or some other segmentation approach. At the strategic level, your management team can review how your company can provide a coverage model worldwide. Here, for example, you may develop or you may deploy a direct sales strategy in the United States and Canada, um, but use partner coverage for EMEA, Asia Pac, and South America. So companies use VI to improve decision making, cut costs, and identify new business opportunities. BI is more than just corporate reporting and more than just a set of tools to coax data out of your enterprise system. CIOs use BI to identify inefficient business processes that are ripe for re-engineering. What keeps the CIO up at night? Well, the CIO's greatest challenge is operational efficiency for their enterprise, both for the IT staff and for each target audience. From our market survey with over 100 enterprise CIOs, here's what they told us. Firstly, the CIO's IT team wastes too much time performing manual BI processes to bring together information for reporting, analysis, and insight. Secondly, IT cannot keep up with the current BI requests posed by users inside and outside of the enterprise users like employees, partners, and customers. Thirdly, it is difficult to get the right information so that the enterprise can make the right strategic and operational decisions at the right time. Fourthly, it can be challenging to have the right timely information to remain compliant and adhere to regulation. And lastly, the CIO feels tremendous pressure to ensure that the organization is not making investments in technology that will become obsolete.
BI can help you address different needs and different audiences. There are three primary groups that need BI, employees, partners, and customers. And I'll take each of these one by one. Let's start with employees. At the management or board level, BI is used to make strategic decisions. At the operational level, BI will be used to make better operational decisions, including re-engineering or improving business processes. At the individual level, BI will be used to provide insight and vital information for that role or function in the enterprise. These are often executive KPI scorecards, regional and individual sales reports, and, and such. Um, Jonathan, talk to us about Temple University Hospital. So Temple University Hospital, one of our customers, um, they use BI specifically for their employees, their doctors, their surgeons, to distribute things like operating room schedules. That sounds right, rather simple, but there's a lot of meat in that type of BI. It's understanding what's in the, it's about also understanding when, what room do they need to be in? What kind of uh, materials and equipment is on hand? Are the instruments clean? Are all of the things ready in order for that surgeon to go in that room and be ready? In other cases, distributing it amongst employees could be something so simple as automatically distributing patient charts or inventory. Thank you, Jonathan. Let's talk about partners. Now, partners may include suppliers or commercial partners such as resellers. A notable example of BI distribution could be, say, every week distributing the latest product codes to vendors so that they can invoice using the most up-to-date SKU numbers. Often there are thousands of SKUs, so distributing manually would be impractical. Another example could be the extraction of inventory data that is sent to suppliers daily so they can order additional supplies if inventory runs low. Uh, Jonathan, talk to us about Guy's and St. Thomas Hospital. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good example of using BI and automating processes where uh, basically they have a system set up that monitors their inventory system, say the level of bottles of Tylenol. If the Tylenol bottle levels falls below 100, then it automatically notifies the lead pharmacist of the shortage. But it doesn't stop there. It also automatically uploads an order to that particular, to the hospital's partners in order to, uh, in order, to order more medicine. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, finally, let's talk about customers. Now, customers are frequent consumers of BI. They receive invoices, critical alerts, and notifications and dashboards. In some cases, customers log into their vendor's portal to view a dashboard of their service status or view previous orders. Um, other business customers use BI to track the progress of vendor's projects. Some customer BI happens in the back end, such as processing orders or printing up packing slips to go into their order boxes. Um, Jonathan, tell us about Carmel Financial. Well, there's no end to different examples of things that can happen for customers when it comes to BI. But um, specifically with Carmel Financial and other companies like them, they use BI to actually track invoices or track credit or to track risk and also monitor those levels of risk and actually send out notifications accordingly, even things, something so simple as sending out overdue invoice notifications. Thank you, Jonathan. What is the BI continuum? Well, from our experience working with CIOs over the past 15 years, we realize that you require a set of integrated BI solutions that address the diverse needs of your audience. For us, the BI continuum is more than a framework. It is a way to manifest your BI strategy in a comprehensive way and address all of your unique requests and requirements. Now, at one end of the spectrum is what we call the push. For all organizations, this represents all the production scheduled reports that need to be accurate and distributed across the enterprise. We provide our enterprise reporting and business process automation solution to address this requirement. Our typical customer has 5,000, 10,000, or 50,000 reports that need to be scheduled, processed, and distributed on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. We provide our BI reporting solutions here for the most common reporting environments like Crystal Reports by SAP or 
SQL Server Reporting Services by Microsoft, and we have um, one for Microsoft Access as well. The magic here is the business process automation infrastructure that leverages business rules, workflows, and notification capabilities. At the other end of the spectrum is what we call the pull. All types of users, customers, employees, and partners need to access critical information when, uh, forgive me, they need, to, um, they need access to critical information that they need to request and obtain on an ad hoc basis. We provide our self-service enterprise reporting portal, which we refer to as Galaxy. Now in between those two is the need to address the operational and strategic needs of the organization. Here, you want a robust analytical BI solution that will present the key information that you require to make the decisions and also give you the ability to drill into the root cause or source if there are problems. And we call this Dashlytics, Dashboards, Analytics, Dashlytics. Rather than try to cobble together a set of disparate technologies from different companies, what we do is bring this together in one integrated BI suite or platform. Let's discuss individual solutions that we provide using several examples. Uh, the first is the enterprise reporting and business process automation. We call this the push. So here's an example. Let's say I'm a large retailer with over a thousand stores worldwide. Key reports need to be delivered to each shift manager every day. Each store has specific reporting requirements. For example, store 160 needs the report in PDF and store 23 wants it in Excel. The reports need to be unique to each store and the shift manager role changes frequently. As in the, the day shift runs the night shift, the night shift runs the day shift, and they don't have a problem calling in sick whenever they feel like it. Moreover, new stores are opened and others are closed. So how can this enterprise keep pace with all the diverse reporting requirements that it has for all 1,000 stores? Here's another example. I'm in a medical center's accounting department and we distribute invoices to customers after service has been rendered. If an invoice is late, as in it's past 30 days, we need to trigger an alert to the customer with the overdue invoice. We want to speed up invoice turnover so these alerts can be delivered in real time. So we offer optimized enterprise reporting and distribution solutions for the different reporting environments. And enterprise reporting and BPA solutions, well, it illustrates the various applications of pushing BI content to different audiences. Um, pushing the BI content can be visible to the audience, like invoices, quotes, and so on, or invisible. For example, syncing job cost data in project management systems to the accounting system. But there's often a synergy between these two types of activities. Um, and it ends up with the creation of a process such as automated ordering or fulfillment systems. So here's an example of an automate of a workflow that you could then choose to automate using this sort of technology. Um, let's assume that I, I work in a shoe shop or I own a shoe shop. Um, so in the first step of the of the workflow, um, my customer orders shoes. Next, a packing slip is printed in the warehouse. Next, the warehouse team packs it and ships it. Next, the customer gets a notification that the order has shipped. Next, the inventory database is updated that there is one less pair of shoes in stock. Next, the sales database is updated that a pair of shoes has been sold. And finally, at the end of the day, an order summary is sent to the manager. So here you can see how the visible and the invisible come together to create a full workflow. Our next solution is the enterprise self-reporting portal and analysis. We call this the pull. Uh, here's an example. Imagine I'm a manufacturing facility and the operations team meets every morning. In this meeting, they need to decide to purchase more supplies. 
They need to be able to quickly run and view the latest production reports without having to dig through a cumbersome ERP system. Within less than five clicks, or taps if you're using a tablet, they should have a report in their hands. Here's another example. I'm a hospital with a large operating room facility. Each day, my surgeons need to know which operating rooms they will be working in, who their patients are going to be, and the status of all the equipment. The surgeons should be able to quickly log into a portal from their iPhone and tap the report they want. The system should automatically configure the report to select the doctor's name, the operating room information, and more, all without having to develop and deploy a separate report for each surgeon. So with our on-demand reporting portal, which we call Galaxy, your BI team can securely serve a single report to many users, creating a unique experience for each user without creating dozens of variants of the same report. Through report permissions and user exceptions, you can define the rules of engagement for how a user interacts with the reports when they run it. Uh, let me give you one last example of this. A daily sales report is made available in the portal for all sales reps nationwide. For each user, rules are defined for how they will interact with the reports. For example, what parameters are visible, what pick, list, pick lists are available, and what kind of database connectivity that they're allowed. The user can only see reports that they're authorized to see, and they can only run a report given the settings defined by the BI team. And this is all done without having to create multiple reports for multiple users. Finally, we provide an on-demand and custom dashboard and KPI for strategic and operational views. Here's an example. I have an operations facility that tracks all of my trucks in the field. My operations team needs an at-a-glance status of each truck displayed on a map. Moreover, I can see quick and dirty breakdowns of our truck stop rate and even call out possible delays and impediments. Ideally, this shows up on several large screens in my control center. Let me give you another example. My executives need, a, need a, score, a scorecard that gives them a quick summary of overall organizational health. This scorecard uses formulae to render a grade for each key department, for example, sales, marketing, production, customer service, accounting, and so on. If items fall below key benchmarks, they can drill down to see a basic breakdown of what's going wrong. Uh, I'll give you one last example um, because we have some, um, some techies in here with us today. Um, so for this, I have some power users, and these are typically tactical BI people. And they need to slice and dice data, and they want to do it without having to constantly battle with Excel, which is how most of us do it. Well, I should be able to securely share key sets of data to these users, enabling them to build their own business insights, such as reports and dashboards. So you can now view exactly the critical information or KPIs that you need in real time, and you now have the power to drill down to the root cause or source, and we will share a demonstration with you shortly about this. And this we call Dashlytics. With our BI suite, we marry needs to capabilities. We bring the BI continuum to life across your enterprise. Imagine you're a manufacturing firm. Every Monday morning, the procurement team meets at 9 a.m. to decide on the raw material they need to purchase. As soon as they walk into the meeting, the latest reports are sitting in their inboxes ready for viewing. And during the meeting, new questions arise. The team needs to know the sales forecast for the next week so that they can ensure they're ordering enough material. They open Galaxy on their iPad and run the latest sales forecast report. As an action item, the team needs to purchase additional materials from their supplier. Fortunately, their vendor has already received the latest vendor codes in CSV formats, uploaded to their secure FTP site, and can begin the ordering process without delay. With a critical decision made, and action taken, the team is confident that they can deliver the required products this week. 
By Monday afternoon, the Chief Operations Officer glances at the operations dashboard displayed in the monitor in his office. Noticing the increase in demand for production, he initiates discussion on expanding the facilities. And so you see the BI suite brings everything together. Let's provide you with a short um, two to three minute um, demonstration of our Dashlytics product in a healthcare setting. Bear with me while Jonathan brings this up. All right. So as you can see, this is just an example of a certain type of dashboard that could be built in a hospital or an organization that manages multiple hospitals or healthcare facilities. Uh, this is just an example what we're seeing here is an example of a strategic dashboard where someone, maybe a director or an organizational director over the hospital system, can actually track and manage the performance between various facilities that they have on hand. And often there are just some key call-outs. This is all designed based on specific specs to decide what are the key bits of information, what are the key call-outs that the executive or the director needs to know in order to take action or make decisions. To drill this down a little bit, um, another example of an operational dashboard that could be used. Now, you probably actually have these as separate dashboards accessed by different people, but for the purposes of this demo, it's all built into the same dashboard. And you can even have it built that way if that is what your business requires. So as an operational dashboard, there's a little bit more deeper detail in the information that needs to be known. Not just a mix of the high level information, but right down to row by row, record by record analysis of key data. When we switch over and to go even deeper, we can look at how things look at a very tactical level. So individual employees, say a nurse or a doctor who's actively working and doing work in the field or in the hospital, can actually use certain BI tools to take action or make decisions or update information. And the key component of this is that this data and this information that happens at the tactical level automatically fills all the way up to the strategic layer. So that way those at the highest level can have the most up-to-date information as things change and update frequently. And this is, so this is just an example of what you would typically see in a healthcare environment. And of course, this often changes and is different for every single hospital and is often built exactly to their specification. Thank you, Jonathan. So uh, let's talk about the characteristics of a BI suite or platform. The characteristics, the most eight important characteristics that you should be looking out for when you're looking to purchase a BI suite or platform. Based on our years of serving enterprises, we have developed these best practices as follows. Well, the first one is that it must be secure. So we're talking here about role-based security, role-based security. Um, it needs to be 100% tamper-proof. There needs to be a comprehensive audit trail. Secondly, it must be compliant. So in all of our industries, there are government and industry compliances that we must follow. And some of the most common ones are Sarbanes-Oxley, which requires archiving of report snapshot history, or HIPAA, which we all know and deal with on a daily basis, which requires audit tracking, data verification, making sure that patient data is not copied, ensuring patient data is not sent out of the network, and so on. Uh, thirdly, it must be agnostic. So it needs to adapt to the enterprise's numerous applications, working with nearly any database or application. Imagine that the typical enterprise has about a thousand applications and you need to be able to access the information across all of these. So your BI suite needs to be able to consolidate data from multiple sources into a single view without compromising central warehouse. And it needs to be able to be connected to cached or live data depending on which is required. Fourthly, it needs to be centralized. Um, for one thing, you don't really want to duplicate your data warehouse, um, so you need to centralize it all. And secondly, centralization 
minimizes administration. And finally, you get greater control over your BI content when it's centralized, and this also helps to keep the BI secure and compliant. It needs to be highly configurable. It needs to be a platform, really, not, not a product. Um, it needs to have a wide number of use cases, built-in API and web services. You wish to be able to embed the solution into existing systems. And we need to be able to improve existing systems without having to uproot them. And it needs to be configured so that it meets the unique business needs that are unique to you, but are not typically found in the general industry as a whole. It must be complementary. So it needs to quickly adapt to the changing business environment. It needs to fully integrate um, with web services and APIs. Um, we need to be able to reduce implementation costs, minimize technical debt, and training needs to be rapid, implementation needs to be fast. It must be scalable. Uh, scalability reduces single points of failure. And it leverages things like VMs, virtual machines, um, multiple server deployment, clustering, for example, cloud server, cloud on-site hybrids, and so on. And there's always an incremental cost of deploying and managing BI content as you scale. And we need to make sure that, we are, that the cost of that actually decreases as you scale. In other words, you get a flat line curve on your costs. So as an example, um, our cost equation is based on usage. You know, how much of the, or, 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 or how much benefit does your business get from the software rather than an arbitrary set of factors like server power. And there are uh, other software vendors um, will charge you if you increase the number of cores in your server, for example. And these are big charges that you have to take into account. And um, our cost equation doesn't do that. We've learned that CIOs want to pay, pay for value, but they really don't want to pay for some esoteric calculation dreamt up by somebody in a basement in a software company. And finally, you need outstanding service for the long term. Um, we're BI specialists. This is what we do. This isn't a sideline for us. We customize the platform for your industry business needs. We build custom enhancements that solve unique business challenges. We eliminate your concerns about obsolescence, and we provide long-term support, custom enhancements, and major updates as part of the deal. Well, thank you all for attending today's webinar. Uh, let me share with you something about our company. And pretty much this is it. I'll give you a couple of minutes to read through. And this is what we do. So in short, Christian Stephen provides advanced BI solutions, and we've done it to over a thousand enterprises in 46 countries. Uh, here's some examples of some of the clients we have. Uh, you'll recognize some of these, and some you won't. Um, some are big, and some are small, but they all pretty much have the same concerns. Here are some of our financial services clients. There's a few of them are having a hard time this week with what's going on in China. And here are some of our manufacturing clients. And finally, just a quick glimpse at some of our clients across many diverse industries. So let's talk about how you get started. You know, based on what we've talked about in the webinar so far, um, how do you get started? Or if you've already started, how do you advance your BI journey? Well, let me offer three options for you. The first is this, get educated. Now, we've created a set of e-books that you may enjoy reading. As an example, we offer the 2015 CIO Buyer's Guide, how to select the right BI tool for your company. And we've created also um, Operational Inefficiency, It's Everyone's BI Pain. And here we discuss the results of our market survey with over 100 CIOs. The second option is to get started. So to help you get started, we've created the Jumpstart program so that you can achieve success in any one or all of these areas in 60 to 90 days. 
Our program includes our integrated BI solution, implementation services, and best practices. And the third option is to get organized. For many CIOs, you may want to benchmark and assess where you are today and where you want to go. If this is your situation, we've created our BI strategy assessment. We will review your BI strategy, identify gaps you may want to address, and provide our recommendations and strategic counsel. Just send me an email at christian at christianstephen.com and we will work with you to schedule your BI strategy assessment. So thank you once again, everyone, for your time. And um, now we're going to take a few questions. Yep. All you, everyone should notice in their GoToWebinar panel, which thank you, by the way, Christian, for, this, for that awesome presentation, um, you should notice uh, that there's a questions panel. And you can actually type right into there some questions, and then we can talk about them live right now. All right, it, I think we have one question um, from Sam, um, who is in Minnesota. And Sam asks, how does this relate to cloud implementations? And how do we implement the BI continuum across a cloud platform? Well, it's really very simple, actually. Um, uh, if you look at BI or the BI continuum this way, there's all the data crunching that happens in the data warehouse on one end of it. And then there is the people who need the information on the other end. And we sit quite neatly right in the middle, getting the crunched information from the data warehouse to the, um, to the people who need it. So we can implement this stuff either at the cloud hybrid setup or really at the pure cloud setup, or particularly for those of you who have HIPAA requirements and so on, actually on-site setups. Um, so yeah. That's how, that's how that can be tackled. Perfect. Another question comes from Mike, and his question is, what particular software technologies do you use in your solutions? Well, Mike, what I'd like to do is to um, contact you afterwards um, to discuss this. this. This would be a technical question that I'd need to bring our development and, and, and technical teams in, and it's quite involved and long. Um, <laughs> So it's not something I can answer straight off the bat, but I'll be happy to connect with you afterwards um, to, to discuss. Excellent. Um, we've got another question um, from Wade, who asks, do you help with BI tool selection? Yes, Wade, we can. Um, whilst obviously we'd love you to buy our software and our tools and our platform, um, the reality is that what we do doesn't always fit with what your organization wants. And we're not shy to say, look, we're not the right ones for this. But we know of X, Y, and Z. They're really good at that, and that's what you should use. And we'll be happy to introduce you. So yes, the answer is we will help you um, to get your business up and running. It doesn't necessarily have to be one of our tools. Uh, another question comes from Chris, who asks, how do you deal with larger projects with extended implementation times? Ah, now this is an interesting one. Um, the way we do it, and our Jumpstart program is designed specifically to take care of this. Um, the reason for larger implementation times is because people generally want to try everything out and put everything in place and go live with their 10,000 users on a single day. Uh, in fact, the reality is that if you can get a small implementation across, say, maybe a thousand users, and very quickly, then it, if you have, if the platform you have bought is scalable, then on the given day you can simply switch it on to 10,000 users, just like that. Um, so we go in um, with the Jumpstart program uh, on a small implementation, and we set everything up. We take 30 to 60, 30 to 90 days to set things up exactly as you require. And at the end of 90 days, parts of your organization would already have been using this, and they would have benefited, and we can meet back up to decide what we're going to do about the real big go live. So generally, on the whole, 60 to 90 days is about as far out as we push it, even for large implementations. Cool. Um, another question from Prashant, who asks, 
do you allow BI tool to do you allow a BI tool to drill down into the source system for detailed transactional information, especially in ERP systems? If we need to know the details for for a financial statement, drill down to the actual invoice. What typically is the best practice? Well, the best practice is pretty much um, exactly what you've described. Um, you are looking at a, a key dashboard and something doesn't look right. You should be able to click on that part of the pie chart or that part of the bar graph and it should drill down to um, row level. Um, and we, we can actually go sub row level as well if we need to. And this is the interesting thing because most dashboarding and KPI tools don't allow you to do this drill down. In fact, you look at the information on your screen then you go to your ERP system and hope to drill down from there and catch what the problem is. We make sure that the tool that we give you um, will actually allow you to drill down and drill down and the drill down and drill down into that drill down until you have reached the actual um, bit of piece of information or the actual record that you want to examine. I hope that answers that, Prashant. Excellent. Um, another question that uh, comes from Sam again is, how do we deal, and uh, by the way, Prashant says thanks, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Another uh, question from Sam goes into how do we deal with the particular challenge of pulling in the resources necessary to not just implement the solution, say a dashboard, but maintain the solution um, continuing into the future? All right. Well, Sam is starting to ask difficult questions. Um, but not too difficult. So Sam, this is what I'd say to you. Um, this is what we do. We're really good at this. We're really good at um, locking up dashboards um, for people to use. And our expertise means that we can do it really, really fast and at very, very low cost. So I'm sure you could knock up the dashboard yourself and many of you have probably spent some time in your life designing reports and so on. And whilst the data is fun, the design part takes a long time and it's not that fun and you know it too. So literally what you do is you get hold of us, you tell us what it is you want, we'll design it for you quickly, we'll implement it and life goes on. You keep playing about with your data, forget about the design, we'll take care of that for you. Cool. Um, and just looks like we got a question from Helen is what is the typical size of the organizations that you serve? Typically, we serve organizations that um, I guess net revenue is 50 million and above per year. Um, but that doesn't mean we don't do smaller organizations. Um, we do because there are some smaller organizations that actually um, rely on a lot of data and a lot of business process automation. Um, and so we get involved there um, whenever we can. But typically, it's 50 million or above. Um, and it looks like we have a, a question from Carol, which is, what is the largest uh, BI reporting volume that you guys have seen to date? Huh. Um, well in excess of 100,000 reports a week. Um, though I've got to say I haven't seen more than 200,000 reports a week. Um, but it doesn't mean that we can't handle it because of the scalability of our systems and because here's the interesting thing, you know, we don't charge for the number of installations you put in um, of, and so therefore we don't charge you multiple server licenses. Um, and we have a lot of organizations that spread this across multiple servers, they have cluster farms and um, they use quad core servers. I've seen a client with a server with um, uh, the eight core it's like eight. a tuple core. Yeah, whatever. System. Yeah, one yeah. of those type things <laughs> that they wouldn't dare do with, say, SAP because of the cost involved in in core licensing. Um, so I'd say I've seen over a hundred thousand. I've not seen more than two hundred thousand, but I'm fairly confident that our our, our software can handle it. Excellent. Um, we still have about three minutes left. Um, and are there any other questions out there for the audience? And, which by the way, if you actually want your voice to be heard, 
um, and you have a mic, you can raise your hand and then I can actually make your voice heard if you actually want us to hear you out, hear every word that comes out of your mouth, as it were. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. I think that's it for the questions. Um, as always, if you guys have any other questions, um, just like Christian said, you can email him directly at Christian at ChristianStephen.com. Um, or you can also contact us directly at info at ChristianStephen.com. Or you can even just pick up the phone and give us a ring. Our number is 888-781-8966. Excellent. Well, um, I thank everyone for joining today's webinar. Um, if you're absolutely interested in any of the things, um, we'll make sure we send out a thank you email so that way it'll link you to all the elements so that you can learn how to get organized, um, take action as well. So, and thank you, Christian, for joining us for the webinar, and I thank everyone for joining, and I hope everyone has, a, has an awesome afternoon. I hope things get a little bit more sunny. Well, thank you all and goodbye.